What is going on everyone? Hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be doing the second graphics card review of the week by looking at the AMD RX 7600, which is slotting in very interestingly at under $300, getting a late price change to $269. Some of the original prices that we were hearing were going to be at $299 and then probably upward for add-in board cards, but now they have landed on the final retail price of $269 for the reference model 7600, which I am taking a look at here today. And even though it is coming in at a fair bit lower than the 4060 Ti, which released yesterday and came in at 399, I still think this is going to be an interesting comparison to take a look at these two cards, being that they launched one day apart. And some people might be just trying to decide if they want to you know, spend the extra hundred or so extra dollars in order to get a 4060 Ti and also, you know, get some of the better, let's be honest, better ray tracing performance, DLSS, uh, frame generation, all of that stuff that NVIDIA has that AMD just does, doesn't really have. Or do you just want to be practical with your money and get the best for your money? And so let's see how close AMD can get to NVIDIA with their sub $300 offering. I can't remember the last time we tested a sub $300 card that I think people will actually be able to get their hands on at launch for under $300. So took a look at it here today in 1080p as well as 1440p gaming. I decided to omit uh, ray tracing from this as I really can't imagine this price point being uh, very competitive for ray tracing and people that are looking for ray tracing effects and getting this price point. Um, you know, if you get a 4060 Ti, that's something that'll be available to you, sure, um, for 1080p um, at least. And you'll be able to use, you know, frame gen and DLSS and some titles. But, um, you know, with AMD, your options are a little bit more limited there to just FSR as we're still waiting for FSR 3 to come out. So we're just testing native here resolutions at 1080 and 1440 with no ray tracing effects used. And I was testing in my 7950X rig along with 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory at 6,000 megahertz. And this was the uh, the Founders Edition uh, cards for NVIDIA as well as AMD. I also threw in my numbers for the uh, RTX 4070, so people will have those numbers to compare as well. And uh, thankfully, AMD did have a reference model. Uh, this card around, as I mentioned, Founders cards from NVIDIA and the uh, reference card from AMD, which is using a single 8-pin power connector and thankfully a standard PCI 8-pin power connector and no need for any adapters or anything like that, like on the NVIDIA card, even though on the 4060 Ti also uses a single 8-pin power cable to power it, you still need to use an adapter to actually plug it into the card, which, you know, sort of adds to the mess and an extra point of um, potential damage or breakage uh, later on down the road. So I guess AMD does have a leg up there, but what about the performance numbers? The Probably the most performance, uh, the mo sorry, the most uh, interesting metric I think most people are going to want to know about are the 1080p numbers when we're talking about this price point at $270. And I wish NVIDIA did have something around the $300 price point a little bit closer to compete with the 7600 and vice versa. I wish AMD had something to compete at the $400 price point, but this is where the stack is at right now. So let's go ahead and take a look at it here with the RX 7600 bringing up the rear of this, obviously, as this is the cheapest card uh, in this testing here but it is what we have available. So in uh, Warzone 2 getting 83 FPS versus 108 on the RTX 4060 Ti. So roughly a 25 frame per second difference there. And that was fairly consistent uh, percentage wise across the board for most of the titles that I tested here. Um, Cyberpunk getting an average of 75. So even at 270 bucks, you're still getting a card that can certainly power Cyberpunk at the ultra settings, not using ray tracing or anything, but still playing at native resolution. 1080p maxed out on that game for a $270 card is pretty impressive. Far Cry 6, uh, interestingly, very, very close to the 4060 Ti. This game is just super well optimized for AMD. It's one of those AMD sponsored titles, so we would expect them to do a lot better in a title like that. And in Far Cry 6, they typically do hold their own against tip uh, against higher tier cards from NVIDIA in that 
Uh, that, that game anyway. <laughs> Not so much the case in the rest of the titles here. Horizon Zero Dawn getting 103 versus 142. Guardians of the Galaxy getting 108 FPS versus 166. Returnal is definitely a little bit more taxing, at getting 70 frames per second. Close to a Protocol was the only title to get under 60 frames per second average, but to be honest, that game is extremely well optimized and just has a very bad PC port. And as I mentioned in the review yesterday for the 4060 Ti, this will be the last uh, round of testing where I'll be including the Callisto Protocol and the benchmark, so may as well just omit it, honestly. It is a useless title, and it is a useless benchmark. And uh, it's convenient to use, but just, like I said, useless. Watch Dogs Legion getting an average of 74, so big takeaway here is 1080p holding its own very well, and definitely more than enough, so you can definitely spend 270 to $300 for an add-in board card for the 7600 and, you know, be well enough to play modern titles at max settings and 1080p, but it would seem like the 4060 Ti would be the better purchase if you wanted to do more 1080p 144 hertz high refresh and you wanted to get a little bit more into that stratosphere and maybe future-proof yourself, get into things like DLSS, frame gen, open up yourself to the opportunity of using uh, ray tracing in titles, even though you could technically do it on the 7600. In most cases, you're probably going to struggle, except for very, very few titles, like maybe Far Cry 6, which is just extremely well optimized, but also has one of the worst implementations of ray tracing. So, you know, take it for what it is. It's a, at this point, at, at 270 dollars card, it's hard to say, is is kind of like a budget card nowadays. It, it, it's, it used to be the mid-range, but now it's become the budget range, and it's just where it is now. So here's the 1% lows for the 1080, for uh, 1080p on all of the titles that I tested. If you want to go ahead and sift through those, as you can see, again, Callisto Protocol, just an absolute abysmal showing here for all cards uh, tested. And we did have some other titles that did come down below 60 in the 1% lows, even for 1080p, <clears throat> like Warzone, Cyberpunk, Returnal, and Watch Dogs Legion just a hair below 60. Uh, thankfully, in, like, in Returnal, Cyberpunk, and uh, Warzone, you could go ahead and use something like FSR if you wanted to go ahead and get your frame rates playing a little bit smoother above 60 frames, or you're going to have to tweak some options. So that's just going to be the reality, is if you're in the market for a graphics card at this price, you may ex expect you have to turn down some options if it's important to you to stay at above 60 all the time. Granted, we averaged above 60 in most of these titles here, but if you want to keep it at 60, you're going to need to use either FSR or just lower down some options and play it higher or something along those lines. And it, you're going to just have to make that personal decision based on your own play style. But 1440p will also be manageable in some older titles. This is just a look at, you know, a glimpse at some of the higher end modern titles. So really the high end that you could expect here and still able to hang in there even at 1440p in some pretty good-looking games. Again, like Far Cry 6, Horizon Zero Dawn, Guardians of the Galaxy, all very manageable at 1440p. And even the, all the other titles here, like Returnal and Warzone, Watch Dogs Legion, all still very playable. At 1440p, you would just have to use FSR or drop down some settings. But if you were in the market for 1440p realistically, I would say you should consider spending at least like the $400 price range. So you could look at a 4060 Ti or you could go used in the AMD market with something like a 6750 and find something around there that's a little bit more reasonable and be able to get those extra frames that you'll need at 1440p if you want to uh, go ahead and go that route. If you're just at 1080p, then the 7600 will be good enough um, but obviously, if you can spend a little more, then get a little more. 1440p also with go ahead and put up the 1% load numbers now here where you can see we do have, again, a good handful of titles coming down below 60 frames like Watch Dogs Legion, Callisto, Returnal, Cyberpunk, and Warzone. So there you go. Those are all of the numbers here for the RX 7600 and against the uh, 4060 Ti and also the 4070 thrown in there for good measure. So that's all the numbers I got for you guys for now. I do wish we had more cards available in this, you know, in the stack for AMD as well as NVIDIA to sort of compare here. But I just felt like with these two cards launching, you know, within 24 hours of each other, I did thought most people would want to see those cards compared up against each other, even though the price is a little bit far apart. It's not like outrageously far apart. $130 conceivably, you might be even just a $100 price difference for certain people in certain areas, certain regions. So it's just the way that the market is. So 
Let me know what you think down in the comments below and all the testing and everything and uh, what graphics card you're going to be picking up if you're in the market for a new one here in 2023. And I'll catch you next time for another video. Peace.